So I wanted to take a closer look at the lemon tetra today and I wanted to show you that fish in a huge tank. Don't worry, it doesn't need an 800 gallon tank. I believe that's what this was. I was standing in front of it at an aquashella a while back and it was a really cool mix of fish. Yeah, you had some lemon tetras in here along with some grammies, you had some angel fish. And this lemon tetra is an awesome aquarium fish and that's why I wanted to highlight it for you today. It is from South America. Now they don't get very large. Like I said, you don't need a tank nearly this large. We'll talk about tank requirements in a minute, but you're looking at a fish that's gonna get around an inch and a half or so. Females tend to be a little bit more round, slightly larger. Males tend to show a little bit more color, but both of them have really nice color, especially when you see some of the males in this aquarium. They're very impressive. They've got the yellow fins. They've got kind of a black outline to some of their fins. Really cool fish. The other nice thing about the tetra, the lemon tetra in particular, is it is a relatively active fish, but not overly active. And it likes to shoal, and you're gonna see that throughout the video. They like to stay in groups together. It's a relatively peaceful tetra. I would say it's probably not the most peaceful tetra in the world, but it's certainly not an aggressive tetra either. Again, if you're looking at this fish, what you're going to get is a fish that's gonna be swimming around the middle of your tank all the time. It's gonna show a nice bit of yellow color. They're gonna stay small, they're gonna be peaceful. Lifespan, you're looking at around three years or so. Some of them live a little longer, some night, not quite as long. If you're looking for fish to keep with your lemon tetra, you've got a lot of options here. Again, as you can see here in this aquarium, there were a bunch of angel fish. These were nowhere near close to full grown, but could certainly be an option. Other types of tetras would really make for good tank mates. So if you've got any type of neons, the standards, the green neons, the black neons, there's all different types, by the way, if you are looking for this fish or other fish to go with them, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. I will put their information down in the description below. They have all kinds of awesome fish and they quarantine their fish to make sure that you're getting the healthiest fish possible. So again, tank mates, yeah, other types of tetras work out very well. You could look at other types of rasboras like your brilliant green rasboras, your rummy nose rasbora, even some of the smaller ones like the galaxies, the emerald dwarf, the chili rasboras would work out well with these fish. By the way, if you're keeping the lemon tetra, you're going to want to keep them in decent sized groups. Usually the recommended quantity is six or more. more. And while that can be that can certainly make for a decent group. I highly recommend if you're going to keep these fish, the more the better. If you can keep 12, 15, or 20 of them in an aquarium of the appropriate size, that might be a really striking feature of an aquarium. So other types of fish, you've got your dwarf grommies and your honey grommies might make nice centerpiece fish. All your live bears for the most part are going to work out just fine. Your endlers, your guppies, your mollies, your platies, corys, plecos, bristlenose plecos, uh, snails are usually fine. Be a little bit careful with shrimp because these fish do get large enough when full grown. They will certainly eat shrimplets, shrimp babies, and even mid-sized shrimp. Bettas, be a little bit careful there as well. While they're not overly fin nippy, those long flowing fins are sometimes very enticing for certain tetra species. And this might be one of them where they might want to fin nip bettas a little bit. Although I've heard people keep them together without too many issues. Those centerpiece fish, like I said, the angel fish is great. If you want to do a pistogramma or rams, that might be a really nice option. Now, when it comes to keeping the lemon tetra in terms of tank parameters, it's not overly complicated. Uh, temperature range, they can withstand a wide range of temperatures, anywhere from around 73 on the low end up to 80 degrees. We used to keep ours closer to 80 degrees without any issues. pH, you're looking at somewhere around six to eight. If you want to breed these fish, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. You're going to want to be on the lower side, closer to six, but we have kept them at a pH of eight. Didn't really have too many issues. Water hardness for both your GH and KH, because these fish are South American, the softer water is perfectly fine. So two, three, four degrees. We kept them closer to 10 degrees on our GH and KH. They worked out just fine. They can certainly go into the low teens. They are a very hardy fish. And I think that's one of the things that attracts people to the lemon tetra. Just make sure you have no ammonia and no nitrite in your aquarium. The aquarium needs to be cycled and you're going to probably have some amount of nitrate. We try to keep that at 20 parts per million or less. By the way, if you don't know what that means, check out the video in the upper right hand corner. We go over how to cycle an aquarium. In terms of feeding this fish, very simple. They're typically not very picky. In our fish room, we feed a variety of North Fin foods. If you want to learn more about them, again, check out that video on the upper right hand corner of your screen. 
very high quality food. Uh, we would feed them a mix of flakes, anywhere from community flakes to kelp flakes and krill flakes. They like some of the small nano size and smaller size pellets as well. They will go crazy for live baby brine shrimp if you like to feed that every once in a while. Certainly not necessary, but they will love it. For the tank size, this is not a huge fish, but because you're keeping them in a group and because they do like to swim around, I highly recommend at least a 20 gallon aquarium. Could you get away with six and a 10 gallon? Maybe, but they're gonna look a little bit cramped when full grown and based on their activity level. So again, a 20 gallon would be at the minimum size long-term that I would recommend for a nice size group. Eight to 10 to 12 fish would work out really well. When you're decorating that tank, it's not gonna be, again, that's not something that, it's gonna really matter to your lemon tetras too much in terms of the substrate. It can be sand or gravel. They don't interact with the substrate, so you can pick based on other fish in your aquarium. They don't need live plants. In fact, in this aquarium, it's all fake plants. It was plastic plants, as you might expect in an 800 gallon aquarium that's being set up for an aquashella. So live plants are always beneficial. Highly recommend that. If you never kept them before, check out that video in the upper right-hand corner wood rocks you can see here they do feel more comfortable when you have some structure so when you have some whether that's plastic castles or real rock and real wood they're going to feel a little bit more comfortable the other thing too is keep in mind they are going to want some open swimming space uh, just because they are a shoaling fish so make sure you leave some space for them to swim around the substrate color and the background color Typically for these fish, it's a little bit better when it's darker. You're gonna see more of those yellows coming out. You're also gonna see more of that black that you can see on the fins when the substrate's a little bit darker and when the background's darker. If it's lighter, not the end of the world, they're still a great looking fish. It's just they tend to lighten up a little bit more with the lighter backdrops. Now breeding these fish, like most tetras, it can be a little bit difficult. Uh, and the reason for that is they are egg scatterers. So as long as you have males and females, uh, they will scatter eggs, provided that the water parameters are more conducive to their breeding. And I mentioned this earlier, but typically speaking, if you're gonna try to breed these tetras, lemon tetras, you're gonna wanna get closer to, to their ideal temperature, ideal water parameters. So softer water in the low single digits, you're gonna wanna have water that's somewhere in the upper 70s, and then when it comes to pH, the pH should be closer to six. So once you meet all those requirements, often they will scatter eggs. A lot of people will use a spawning mop and the eggs will get caught up in there. And then the spawning mop is transferred to a five or 10 gallon aquarium where the eggs are allowed to hatch. If you don't transfer the eggs, usually all the other fish in the aquarium are gonna eat the eggs. And certainly after the eggs hatch, they will eat the fish. Is it possible to have a few leftovers, a few survivors in a heavily planted tank? Sure. But if you really are wanting to breed these fish, you're gonna probably need a spawning mop and to remove the spawning mop every couple of days. The eggs are gonna hatch pretty fast, usually within a couple of days, depends on the water temperature. Feeding them, that's another little bit of a challenge. We typically, when we have very small fish, we will feed North Fin fry food and then transition them to live baby brine when they're, when they're large enough to eat that. But this is a great fish. You can see throughout the video, lots of activity, lots of color. Pretty peaceful fish, not very expensive. Usually in most markets, you're just looking at a few dollars, three to five dollars per fish. So it makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to get that larger group uh, for your aquarium. Again, if you want more information on tank mates, check out the description below. We'll have a lot more for you there. Really appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.